Hey everybody, I'm Todd and this is Sweet Tea Get Tires. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel and welcome to my life. All right, you guys, so you know where we are. If you don't, you can always go back and catch the last video that I posted, which is episode nine of the giveaway build. Here's the neck for this build. This thing is almost ready to accept some frets. The couple of things I wanna get done before we go there. First of all, I wanna get a recess routed in the front of our neck pocket here. What routing that recess is gonna do is let us pop this neck down inside that pocket. That way, if we need to reestablish our center line on the body, at least down here at the end where the bridge goes, we can move the center line over just a little bit if we need to, to assure us that we've got perfect alignment once we go to drill our string through ferrule holes and um, our bridge mounting screws. So on the Tele body template, you've got an off body tab here and here. The fit all, has three hardened steel bushings on the, the lower bow side and up here on the upper side there's one off the side of the neck pocket. I wanted to make these templates be able to be used together. The fit all's got the hardened bushing here right beside the neck pocket. The tele body's up here on the tab. I needed to drill an extra hole in the fit all template so I could use it back and forth with the tele body template. All right, you guys, I got my mask on. I've got my depth set on the router. Let's just go with it. I am excited, you guys. I need to get calmed down a little. When you're dealing with a Telecaster or a Stratocaster neck pocket, the crucial part of the neck pocket is the bottom. The sides and the front, yes, they matter, but getting a neck pocket that fits super tight in a Strat or a Tele or any other guitar that has a bolt-on neck is not always the best idea. I'm not saying you make it sloppy. But it is important on a Tele or a Strat that you give yourself about a 30 second of movement at this end of the neck. That way you can fix any alignment issues over time. If you get your neck too tight on a bolt-on neck, you've got no adjustment whatsoever to correct your angle. When you're doing a set neck instrument, what's important is that you make certain that your center line is perfect before you ever route the neck pocket. If we were dealing with the set neck instrument right now, I would not have routed this neck pocket until after I had already made the neck. Here's the guitar. So this is the first time you're seeing it together. I think it's gonna be beautiful. Uh, I can't wait to get some oil on this thing. I find myself when I get to this point in a build where you can actually slide the neck down in the pocket, I have to step back for a minute, take a couple of breaths. You know, I start getting, I feel myself getting all tight on the inside, you know? So I've got a well-defined center line on this body. I wanna take that center line and I wanna make sure I draw up some things inside this neck pocket. I know I need at least three inches of neck pocket bottom to have a stable, neck to body fit and what we're going to do is measure out for these holes that we need to drill for the screws that pass through the bottom of the neck pocket that mount our neck to our body i'm actually almost at three and a half so we're going to bring that in to three and a quarter and we're going to put our first mounting hole location at 15 millimeters okay so there's our two top side holes so we know we want to be 13 millimeters. All right, so there you go, you guys. Those four dots here, 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 and here. I know they're a little bit closer to the center line than you would normally see on a bolt-on neck 
first of all, what that's going to allow me to do is not have my threaded metal inserts too close to the outside edge of this neck, which can cause you to have some blowout issues. I do not want that. Secondly, when I go to start shaping the back of this body, I don't want those recesses too close to the edge of the back of my neck pocket. So let's get these punched in. All right, there's one. There's two, three, four. So let's do this. Let's drill ourselves a pilot hole. That pilot hole is gonna leave a hole to, for us to line up our Forstner bit with, drill in the recess. Then from that side, we will drill the seven millimeter hole in the center of this. The, uh, the pilot point and the three millimeter hole that we drilled before will act as a guide for the seven millimeter hole. Because we marked up on the inside of our neck pocket and I know I've got tons of sanding, plus I know I'm gonna drill those recesses in the back of here, I'm not concerned if we get just a little tear out but we want to go slow and I will use a backer board. Okay, that looks good. Let's drill it. And there's four. So now what we're going to do is mount up our 15 millimeter Forstner bit. So stage two of the process. We'll drill these recesses in, then I'm gonna mark the back of the neck for the threaded metal inserts, then we'll drill the seven millimeter holes. I think that'll give me a little bit more of an accurate mark to make sure that these are centered. That looks good that way. Double check it again this way. We look good, let's do it. You wanna go slow. And what I'll do is drill this first one in. We'll set our depth stop. Now we'll double check that by putting this bolt upside down in there and checking our depth on it. I'm going to go just a tad deeper and then we'll set our depth stop. And I'll show you guys. That's what I'm talking about right there. We got our depth stop set. So there we go, you guys. Recessed in the back of the body. So how we do this is we get this lined up with the center line on our fretboard. And then we come down here to this end. I don't know why we would need it to be any better than that. We've got this little center punch pin right here. You, I don't want to hit it too hard because I don't want to move it. All right, there are my holes for my threaded metal inserts. All right, now what we wanna do is let's go ahead and drill these out to seven millimeters. All right, straight on through. There we go. Four holes, four holes, we're good. Now comes the next tedious job. So I already know I need a nine millimeter drill bit for these. A nine millimeter drill bit should give us about a millimeter of bite into the sidewall of the hole that we drill into this thing. They're about 10 and a quarter millimeters, 10.25 millimeters deep. And we just want to measure minus the point, 10.75 millimeters deep. We'll scratch it. Now we're gonna mount up this nine millimeter and drill the real holes in. Scratch. Looks good. This is like a six flute countersink bit. It's all it is. When you use a, a wide angle countersink bit, it creates like a blind hole right there or a double edged hole. And that will give us a place for that lip from the counter, um, from the, the threaded metal insert to ride down inside there. So there we go. 
you can see those are chamfered on the edge and again these are hardened carbon steel threaded metal inserts all right you guys there we go that's what i was pretty much talking about how i want to mount this neck what we need to do now is i left a little bit of meat on the sides of the neck pocket down here on this side down inside here i just want to shade that area that needs to be shaved off of there and that needs to go some of this i can do on the spindle sander i want to be able to make sure i get this shape right here where the neck connects to the body like i want it and like i think you guys would want it too so let's set, let's get some of this off of here So I was just trying to knock off those corners right here. I don't want to hit the side of my neck pocket yet. Um, I'll work on the rest of this with files and we'll get that down with some sandpaper. We're really close already. Once we get this exactly like we want it, I can kind of draw that shape on the neck to let me know what to do with that transition. And let's take our pencil and let's just draw this. Not saying that I will copy that shape directly, but now I will know that is my no-go zone. We're going to carve this neck using the facet method. I kind of shape by feel, really. I don't use profile gauges. We're going to come in from the edge of this neck. 10 millimeters, 10 millimeters, let's draw us a line. Ten millimeters. On this side of the neck, since we're going for a C profile, I'm going to come 15 millimeters from the edge three to four millimeters below our fretboard, which is fine for this first facet. There's our first facet. We don't need to draw anything else on here. So the first thing I like to do is knock off the corner. All right, there's facet number one on that side. We'll do the same thing on this side. It already feels like a guitar neck. 21 to 21 and a half millimeter thickness at the first fret. I want about a 23 millimeter thickness um, at the 12th fret. 22 to 23. Once we get these facets cut in, then we can dimension the first fret and the 12th fret down, and then we'll connect the two checking it with the straight edge every once in a while to make sure we're getting it flat. There's our facets, or our first facet, you guys. All right, you guys, so it's the next day. Um, it is Monday, February the 14th. Happy Valentine's Day, all you guys. All right, I got my first two facets carved into this neck. These two right here. The general rule of thumb is is you take and divide the first facet you cut in half and then we come in a little bit further towards our center line 18 millimeters so let's go to nine millimeters and we're just going to make a line down through here let's do the same thing on this side we should be roughly at the same level nine millimeters we'll do the same thing here we're at 25 millimeters left on the top, so half of that will be 12 and a half. Half of that distance would be six and a quarter, so we're just gonna mark this at six millimeters. All right, we're 15 millimeters to the center line here, so seven and a half. 
So I want to cut from this facet to here. That is my next cut. I don't want to get super aggressive with my cut. I want to, I would rather concentrate and make sure that I'm keeping a symmetrical facet down through here than I had try to really remove a bunch of material at one time. So you just kind of set yourself an angle and then start cutting that in. Just want to kind of define the facet and then flatten it out, you know, and just keep going until you get to your line. We're starting to create the roll at this point. We're going to start right here. We're going to file away until we get to about 21 and a half millimeters. That will give us a little extra room for sanding and all that stuff. You do not want to go too far. We're about 21 and a half. Now we're going to come down here on the 12th fret line and we're going to cut that in as well. We'll use the Shinto for this. We don't have as much material to remove down here. I want to flatten the area between here and here. Now let's take our short little aluminum straight edge. I just want to see where my high spots are. And honestly, we're looking really good. What we've started to do is drop this taper down to our fretboard level. So now what I want to do is I want to come halfway in between those that facet we just created and halfway in between this facet and get rid of this ridge right here. So at this point, I'm not drawing anything. I'm using the facets we've already got in there as a guide. So I've got a facet, one last facet running down either side that's coming ultimately from about the bottom of the fretboard about halfway in between these two points. All I want to do now is take that point away and join about halfway in between the facet that's running from the bottom of the fretboard to the facet that's running between my center line and here. So there's our carve so far. I like to hold it up in the light like this and just visually verify that I'm mostly level. All we're looking for is major inconsistencies. That looks really good. I'm happy with it. I'm gonna turn it around this way and do the same thing. As I get closer to the end of this and when, when I'm doing the actual sanding on this neck, I like to just close my eyes and run my fingers over this thing. There's something about it when you close your eyes. It's like it heightens your sense of touch and you can really feel um, the little, any little inconsistencies become really evident at that point. So. I like to pay really close attention when it comes time to sand this thing. And we'll just start taking some of this material away. And once we start getting close to that line, I'll switch over to the half round. So, you know, we're getting closer at this point. We're gonna get out one of my favorite tools ever. And that is the card scraper. I've got some minis here and I've got some crown from Sheffield, England. One's right here. We'll try these minis first. I haven't used these yet. I did sharpen them. They're absolutely fantastic. The headstock transition's pretty much ready. I need some final sanding done on that, but that's the shape I've chosen to go with. I think it's beautiful. It's really comfortable on the hand. Don't want to go too far with the Shinto. I just want to get most of this material off of here. And I absolutely want to leave myself a little bit of the full neck thickness beyond um, where the body contact point is. Now that we've got that basic shape, 
to where we want that like that I don't want that symmetrical I want it to kind of fade out down here on the treble side I'm going to switch over to this extra fine Iwasaki and we'll start getting our ramp up filed in there. So I'm kind of having a hard time believing this is like, you know, this will be the tenth video I've posted for this build alone. What a beautiful guitar neck. I mean, it's just, I can't get over how lovely Paduke is. I really love Paduke as a neck wood. What do you guys think about that shape? We're pretty much at the point now to where I'm happy to leave this neck in this state while we move back to the body. Start thinking about that carve I want to do around the, uh, the upper bow area. And I want to rake it back far enough that it exposes some of that poplar underneath. I want the widest part right in here where your forearm crosses over. I want to carry that cut all the way over to the center line and I'll clean that up once we cut that tab off. That's kind of what I'm talking about right there. Just an accent line. I may even widen that out a little bit. All right, that's better. Now, I'll take some 80 grit on a hard sanding block and just start cleaning this up. That's going to be cool, man. I like it. I really do. All right, you guys. So this is going to conclude episode 10. We got a lot of work done in this video. More than I thought I would get done in a couple of days. But I don't want to go any further on this guitar before I release this video. Um, in the next video, I'm not even going to say what we're going to get done. We're just going to work. And I'll end the video when it feels right to me. And this feels like a point that it, we should probably call it. This neck is shaped. I've got my transitions cut in. Everything is sanded to 240 grit with the exception of the fretboard. We got our threaded metal inserts installed in the back of the neck. They work perfectly. We did some sanding on the headstock. I cut this bevel into the body. We got our screw, our mounting, bolt mounting holes cut through the bottom of the neck pocket. I recessed those so the heads of those bolts fit nicely down inside those recesses. I started thinking about it. And you know, it really doesn't matter to me if it winds up being 25 videos to get through this thing. I'm not worried about that. I think subconsciously I may be thinking because I've been watching all these live streams from Crimson here lately. I guess it makes me kind of feel like I'm under some kind of deadline. The only deadline I have is I would like to be finished with this guitar by May, obviously, but I want enough time between now and then. I want to finish this guitar early enough so I can leave it hanging for a couple of weeks and let everything settle in, um, find out what the neck's going to do. I can go ahead and make any adjustments and do a proper setup on this thing before I ship it out of here. You know, that's the only kind of deadline I'm under here. The only other looming issue that I have is the great guitar build off. But I'm not worried about that either. You know, we're far enough along into this build now to where the, the really problematic and troublesome task We've done already. The neck shape, the neck pockets cut. I would appreciate it if you guys would share this channel with some of your friends. Uh, that's one of the reasons, a secondary reason, but still one of the reasons why I did this giveaway is to see if I could grow my channel. What my goal is is try to get to the point where I can start doing live streams. I'm not looking to get into what Ben does at Crimson and do a weekly thing. I would love to be able to share with you guys when I get a really new cool piece of, 
of wood, some new product I think you guys might be interested in, that would be really cool to be able to do on a live stream, you know, and us discuss it back and forth in real time. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers and I need you guys to help me do that. So if you could just tell a couple of your friends to come subscribe to Sweet Tea Guitars on YouTube, I would really appreciate it. You guys come on back, keep visiting the channel, hit that notification bell so you can be made aware when I release a new video for this build or any other build I decide to do here on the channel. Um, I really appreciate all the killer comments you guys have been leaving. It makes me feel so good to read some of the things you guys say. And until the next video, you guys, peace and love.